Okay, hi. Uh, my husband just came home for lunch, so I apologize for any click clacking in the background. Uh, let's talk about step two for the Hello Summer beach bag. Now, I'm doing it a little bit differently than I normally do. Hopefully, everything is working right. I'm in Zoom so that I have my close up camera available so that I can demonstrate some stitches for you. And then I am live streaming from Zoom to Facebook. So if you are on Facebook, I've got comments pulled up. I hope they will pop up um, <laughs> so that I can see them. And then I've also got Zoom pulled up. And so we're we're gonna see, we're gonna see how this goes. We're gonna give it a try. And if I muck it all up, I'll do another one later and, and we'll go again. So step two, so this is step one. Actually, this isn't all the way done with step one, but we're we're pretending um because this is the size three bag and it's going to be a little bit wider before i'm done but this was your step one and this is what you should have at the next to last row of step two so in step two we transition from working back and forth in rows so for this part the bottom into working in the round we do a few increases here on the corners we get nice roundy corners and then we start building the sides as sort of an extension of the bottom right so that you've got a nice solid base if you drop say your chapstick down into your beach bag it doesn't fall out the bottom quite so easily right so you can when you're making your own you can make this wider if you want a wider gotta hold it up right if you want a wider band at the bottom, you can make it wider. Just continue repeating those same rounds to make it taller. Or conversely, you can make it shorter. If you are just going to use this as a fruit bag at the market, then you can kind of skip that part and, and just do your increases to get your stitch count right. And then move straight into the flight crochet, which we will get to next week um, with step three. So let's see. Let me check here. Okay, I think that is good. I know there's a little bit of a lag. What are we oh. doing here? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that, there we go. All right. So that should be good. Um, all right, so I'm gonna switch back here. And so this is step two, this is step one. And what I'm going to do, oh, you know what, before I jump into the, the close-up technical stuff on this, let me show you the stitch markers. So I've made two sets. We'll be giving one of them away today. There are, this, these ones are, this is kind of a, a sea glass green, and these are a really light frosty blue, and then this one's white, and with silver, right? And then these are... Um, this is another white bead, a bigger kind of a peachy color, a golden peachy color. And then these are three smaller ones. They're pretty similar to this one. So I made sets of five because that's how many stitch markers I used with this pattern. Um, so it's it's a bigger bigger set than I would normally do, but it's it's especially for the bag. And then I kind of have fun with the the displays. Normally I only do a smaller one, so I use like a tag. But I decided to make it bigger so that I could do all five and sort of do a play off of the the bag shape that we're using. So we will be giving those away today to one participant in the crochet along, and I'm knocking on the step down. Um, so I will come back to that later. I want to give, um, everybody a chance to join in if they want to. And so let me go ahead and dive into talking about these corners, working these corner stitches. And then, um, we'll also hop on over to the last step where you change colors. All right. And so I'm going to switch over to my close up camera now. And. I don't want to, I just want this one. Okay, so this, this is my, my messy wobbly table. <laughs> I need to upgrade, but I will get to that eventually. Um, and I, I paint on it too. So that's where the paint swatches come in, of course. All right, so here we have, this is my step one bag and I've got 
the stitch markers in all four corners, right? So way over here, these are the other corners. And I'm not gonna go all the way around this thing with you, but I just wanted to show you. All right, so round one of step two. So this is this is the last stitch of row, what is that, 20, 28 or 46, all right? So what we're gonna do to start working in the round is we're gonna work two more stitches in the same spot as, as this has worked, and that's gonna turn the corner for us. So there's one, is that close enough? You see that all right? It looks okay. One and two, all right? And so we're gonna mark with a different stitch marker, okay? This is why, this step right here, this is why I use five stitch markers, because I've got three stitch markers marking the, the other corners, a different color marking the first, first stitch of the round, and then another color marking the corner there. So that's just my way of, of keeping it straight. Okay, and then working across the ends, if you spread these single crochets out a little bit, you can kind of see these spaces. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna work into these spaces at the ends of the rows and count your stitches to make sure that you've got the right number. Um, either that or be prepared to improvise later on to make sure you've got the right stitch count. So you just single crochet evenly all the way across this, right? Across that end. And there are, there's a photo tutorial in the pattern as well so that you can see still shots of, of some of this. All right, and so let's, let's pretend here that we have come all the way down here to this corner. We're gonna rejoin this yarn on. We're gonna do a little bit of pretending with this one so you don't have to sit here and watch me do a whole bunch of crocheting. All right, so here we are at the other end. Oops. And here's my last stitch, right? So there's, there's my, my corner is marked. I'm gonna go under two loops. Well, I'm gonna try to. There we go, under two loops of the corner. And then this, focus please, this is where we're going to work our next, it's an increase because you're working three stitches in the same spot, right? And that turns our corner so that you're ready to work across this end now. And then again, you wanna use your stitch markers to mark the corners, okay? So that's all you do for this first round. Um, and again, we're gonna pretend a little bit. So that was round one. For round two, say we come back here and we've crocheted all the way across this edge, right? For, for round two or, or to finish round one and we're ready to start round two. Um, so where's my yarn? So I'm gonna rejoin my yarn over here. Hopefully this isn't too, too wacky for you guys. Okay, so here, here I have, I have finished up round one, right? We're pretending again, yes? <laughs> All right, so I finished up round one and I've come to my first mark stitch and I'm gonna work two single crochets in this stitch. And so that's technically, that is actually the, or the last stitch of row 28 or row 46, all right? So we're gonna work, work two single crochets in that stitch, okay? And we're gonna mark the first one as the first stitch of the round, yes? All right, so that's the first stitch of round two is we work two stitches in that spot. And now this is our corner stitch. We're only going to work one stitch there so that it stays our corner. Otherwise, we'd have to work three. But I don't want this to be quite so squarish as all that. And also, I had to make sure that I had the right stitch count. So we're only going to work one stitch in the corner stitch. And now we're going to work two stitches in the next stitch. And this turns our corner. And so we're going to do that on all four corners right? So your corner stitch 
is going to get one single crochet in it, and each stitch on either side of that is going to get two in it. Okay, so that's where our increases come in this round. So you would do that all the way around, doing the same sort of increase for round two. And then on round three, you put two single crochets in your corner stitch, and then that's it. So round three, as you work around, you come back to here and you work three or two single crochets, two single crochets in each corner stitch on the third round. And that is what gives you these nice roundy corners. So see here, let's see if you can see them. So right here, it's in focus, looks all right. All right, so right here is our three single crochets. And then here is our two single crochets on either side of this one. And then right there, we've got two single crochets in one stitch. So you only do three rounds of increases. And then these remaining rounds, I think it's round four, you just repeat one single crochet in each stitch all the way around, roundy, roundy, as many rows or rounds rather as you want. Now, when you get to the last one, let me consult my own instructions so I don't muck this up. <laughs> oh, Trish is here. Hi, Trish. Thank you for joining us. And yay, the comments are working. <laughs> um, okay, so round three, round four, we, we just single crochet in each stitch around. And then we do that another six times. Where am I? See, I should have made myself notes. Okay, yes, round 11, single crochet in each stitch around to the last two stitches. That's where I am right here. And so you see, we don't have the corners marked anymore after round three because we don't need them marked. Um, it's just to help make sure that we get our corners stacked up where they are meant to be. Okay, so this is going to be the very last part of round 11. So I've single crocheted all the way around to the last two stitches, and now I'm going to slip stitch. So just pull it through the loop, right? Yarn over and pull it through the loop. And so what this does is it kind of closes the spiral, right? And so at this point, I'm ready to cut this yarn. And you can finish it off now, you can finish it off later. Actually, let me just go ahead, since we're here and everything, I'll show you the invisible join that I like to use to close this. All right, so that's that stitch right there. And I'm gonna use the invisible join to duplicate the top of this corner stitch right here. All right, so I'm going to insert my needle under the next stitch. Actually, let's come through this stitch marker. Okay, under the next stitch, Okay, and then I'm going to pull it snug, but not too tight. I'm going to go back through the stitch marker again so that it stays in the right spot. Okay, and then I'm going to go back down through the center of that stitch and then pull it until it's about the right size as the regular top of the single crochet would be. And then my stitch marker is holding it, holding it steady. So, and then I just come back to the back. I do a tiny little knot right there to help keep it from unraveling. And I will usually thread my yarn down through. Ooh, this is a blunt needle, not very helpful. All right, and then I can come back and sew this in later, okay? And so now we're ready to join on our second color. So that's exciting stuff. I'm gonna switch to this kind of sea glass green color. And I'm going to use a standing single crochet to join on. Okay, so you start with a slip knot on your hook. And then we're going to come back to our marked first stitch of the round. And we're going to join with a single crochet in this spot. Okay, right there. And now we've worked over the top of both the single crochet and the invisible join, right? There we go. Now you can see it. Okay, and so that's all you have to do to join on. And then for this last round, step two, you just single crochet in each stitch again, all the way around. Okay, and then again, we're gonna pretend, I'm gonna scoot ahead here. Uh-oh, got a knot in the yarn, not helpful. 
All right, and I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna join on over here, all right? Because we're pretending that I've gone all the way around. Whoops. So this is another standing single crochet just for giggles. All right, and when you get to these last two um, stitches, those are your slip stitches, right? So they look a little bit different, but you can still work up close might be better, right? You can still work under those slip stitches the same way you would work under a single crochet. Whoops. It's just usually a little bit uh, more snug. It's a bit of a tighter fit to get under those top two loops there. There we go. Two loops. Got them. Okay. So your, your last two slip stitches still count. And so that helps. It's not perfect but it helps make that join, I'm wiggling the table, sorry. That makes that join a little bit neater so that you don't have a, a big jog, right? Like this, right? Okay, and then all you're gonna do to finish this round is join it with a slip stitch to the top of your standing single crochet. And I like to snug my slip stitch it. Throw a stitch marker in there and you are ready for round three, right? not round three, step three. All right, so see, there's our, there's our little jog. It's not perfect, but it's closer than it would be than if it was up there. And then for step three, what we're gonna do is we're going to move into the filet crochet section. So there's that. <sighs> Trish, you're still in Texas. <laughs> what a great trip that must be. Let me switch back here. Okay, so that was <laughs> my little demonstration. It might not have been necessary, but I know we've got a couple folks who are, are coming over. They normally knit and they decided they want to do a little crocheting. And so I wanted to kind of offer the mini tutorial versions there um, in, in the live stream. Hopefully that worked for the recording with the switching of the screen so that it's big. We'll find out soon and I'll post that later. But very last thing. Oh, let me check. Um, all right. I don't appear to be missing any other chats or texts. The last thing I want to do is let you guys know that the winner for our first giveaway is Tove. Tove, congratulations. You are going to have to tell me which one you pick, either the, the gold with the, the peachy gold beads or the green and silver. So let me know. Can I get that to focus? You know, that would be nice. Uh -uh, not going to do it. Okay. Well, anyway, there they are. Silver and green or gold and peachy. Those are your two options. Congratulations again, Toe, for your green and yellow market bag. I'm so excited to see you move into the next color. I think it's going to be really gorgeous. All right. So I think that's all I've got for you today. If you've got any questions as you work through this step two, let me know. I am more than happy to help you out if um, this video doesn't work out and you need some more help with the um, the increases on the corners or changing colors there at the very end. I'm wiggling my table again. Sorry. Uh, just let me know. Send me a message. Drop a post in the Facebook group or the Ravelry group and um, we'll get you sorted out. So thanks so much for joining me. Trish, enjoy the rest of your visit in Texas and I will see you guys next week for the filet crochet body of the bag. I can't wait to dive into that step with you. So questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you soon. Oh, and don't forget to share your progress pictures. I want to see them. You, even, if, even if all you have is yarn, I want to see that too. We'll get you started. We'll get going and we're going to have fun. So I will see you soon. Bye.